Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. My name is David Vignola and on behalf of Studio One Expert, I have a quick tip for you on how to deal with and try to reduce or eliminate completely latency when using Studio One version three. So I get this question at least once a week from typically people that are new to Studio One or just typically people that are beginners in mixing and recording in general, which is totally cool and I'm totally glad to help. And I thought instead of answering this in an email over and over and over again, I would create a video and share it with you all. So if you already know this tip, I apologize, but for you beginners, this is a great tip. So the question I get kind of goes like, this. I am either doing some mixing and I have a bunch of plugins in on my session and I'm starting to get some crackles, some pops, some delays and latency kinds of issues where things aren't sounding right. Or I'm doing some recording and I'm trying to record with some VST instruments, whether it be, you know, presence or some guitar amp simulation or something to that effect, whether it's Studio One plugins or whether it's third party plugins, and I'm getting a bunch of latency or delay. So if I'm a keyboard or a guitar player, I strum my guitar and from the time that I hit the strings to the time I hear it back in the speakers, there is a slight delay. We call that latency. And nine out of 10 times, usually what the problem is, is a quick fix. And I want to show you how to do that today. So let's first go over to our uh, Studio One and come up to Studio One at the top left-hand corner of your screen and go to Preferences. And one of the things you want to take a look at in the Preferences screen, you want to make sure you're on the Audio Setup tab, okay? And we are going to look at this uh, setting right here, Device Block Size. And as you can see, I have it at set at 2,048 samples. And if you click this little triangle, it's gonna drop down. And depending on the audio interface that you're using will depend on how many sample choices that you'll have. Here is a golden rule of thumb that you can follow. When you are recording into Studio One, you wanna to try to set this sample size somewhere, the lower you go, the less chance you're gonna have with latency. So I typically would start it at something like 128 samples um, when I'm doing recording. And then I could record with VST instruments all day long, I have no latency. When you are mixing and you're gonna be adding lots of plugins to your session, you wanna make this number as high as you can possibly make it. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna allow uh, resources in on your CPU to be freed up to in order to process these plugins. Okay, without getting too technical, so I don't confuse people and confuse myself, just keep in mind that this uh, setting and latency in general really has everything to do with the computer that you're using, the processor speed that you have. Um, it doesn't matter if it's Mac or PC. If you have an older computer that has a slower processor, you're going to be more prone to latency than if you have, let's say, a brand new computer with a much faster processor. So the golden rule of thumb is if you're getting latency, the very first thing that I tell people, and this fixes their problem nine out of ten times, and this is why I want to share this video with you. Um, if they're doing some recording with these VST plugins and they're having latency issues, I tell them go to the device block size, make this number as low as you can go to get rid of the latency. Start at 128. If you're still experiencing some latency, go to 64 samples. If you're still experiencing some latency, you can go to 32 samples. Typically 128, 64 usually fixes the problem. On the other side of the spectrum, if you are mixing and you're starting to add lots of plugins and you're having some cracks and pops and little, you know, what sounds like an old vinyl record on a turntable, uh, those kinds of things are happening or things are cutting out, then just make sure that the, that the device block size is set as high as possible. And then you should be able to put as much plugins on your session as you want. And you should not have any of those types of uh, audio artifacts. And again, if you still are experiencing that, then you want to take a look at your computer. And if you're using something that's, you know, more than say four to five years old with a very slow processor, that could be some of the problem as well. But anyway, this fixes the problem nine out of 10 times. So I wanted to share that with you. So go to Studio One Preferences, check out the device block size and nine out of 10 times that will fix your problem. So until the next video, this has been David with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. For more mixing tips, training, concepts, techniques, and everything around recording, mixing, and mastering in your home studio, head out to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and also check out the blog over at StudioOneExpert.com. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Take care.